Let's get back to the market. Uh, we've still got that rally going on here. 34 minutes, that's how long the market's been open this morning. We're up 333 for the Dow, 270 for the Nasdaq. David Barnson joins us now. All right, David, we've got this big Fed meeting this afternoon. What are you expecting? Well, it's not a big Fed meeting in terms of a surprise coming because that's the way the Fed operates now. They spend months and months telling you what they're going to do. And then today is just sort of the uh, announcement of what they've already told you they're going to announce. They're going to raise rates a quarter point. They're going to say that they're going to watch data for the rest of the year. The market thinks they're going to raise rates five or six more times. I think they're going to raise rates two more times. Eventually, the yield curve inverts. Eventually, credit spreads blow out, meaning that all this liquidity that credit markets have gotten used to tightens up, spreads go higher. And then all of a sudden, the Fed will say, OK, we have to put the brakes on. But they're not going to say they're doing it for that reason. There will end up being disinflation that comes in. The inflation rate will come lower because a lot of its elevation was from extra events related to supply chain. And they'll use that as their excuse for all of a sudden stopping what they need to do to normalize monetary policy. That's a that sounds to me like a fairly rosy outlook. Oh, I, I don't think it's rosy at all. I think our economy desperately needs normalized monetary policy. I disagree with Liz that the reason is because of the inflation pressures. You don't want a 0% interest rate because you want some growth in your society. And, and the idea that everyone's celebrating low interest rates that are artificially low is just insane to me. Well, we don't want artificially low rates. We want growth. And there should be a time price on money. That's natural and organic. So I, I am not being rosy by predicting that the Fed will continue to intervene in capital markets. OK, let's get to your dividend picks, because that's what we always love to hear from you. You've got three for us. First off, Gilead Sciences. What's the what's yeah. the go ahead make your case. I just want to point out that you notice today I sent some healthcare names. Yep. And this is because we've been doing a lot on energy. And then there's stuff going on right now, a Russia, Ukraine and consumer staples are hurting because they're global multinational companies. The Gilead's a great example. The drug companies are as reasonably disconnected from Russia, Ukraine as you could be. People still need health care, still need pharmaceutical. Gilead Sciences, a 5% dividend yield, Ooh. very underpriced. Uh, GlaxoSmithKline, I know you like that one too. Yeah, similar story, and they're spinning off their consumer products division. That'll be a spinoff later in the year, and then you still have a great pharmaceutical company 5.3% yield, oh. and I think it's a great takeover candidate. 5% oh, I could definitely live with. Last one, uh, Merck. And, and Merck is only 3.5%, but it's grown the dividend every year of my career. And Merck is just that really strong staple in American pharma, the best R&D, huge Keytruda, which is their, you know, therapy that works across a million different platforms, so Merck is solid, along with Gilead and Glaxo as higher yielders. Got it. All right. Um, David Barnson, always good stuff. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Promise. Thanks, Stuart.